How many people think they understand what racism is? Show of hands. Come on, you know, you, 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 you think you know. I'm not suggesting I know. I just have a couple of definitions that, uh, that kind of came to me as I thought about How many people think there are white racists? That there are white racists out there? How many think there are black racists out there? Okay. Now, this is an interesting thing because this becomes important as we begin to define concepts. Now, I do that. I usually define concepts um, all, the, all the way. But one of the things that I, I do is I try to help people get a picture of what I mean by, by racism. So tell me how it is. I'm going to first category is white racism, then we'll deal with black racism. So white racism. Tell me the ways in which white racism adversely impacts the lives of black people. Just what are the ways that white racism can adversely impact the lives of black people as a group? What are some of those ways? I'm sorry? Power, but how is that defined specifically? Education, okay. I'm sorry? Economically employment. What else? Housing, what else? Policing, why are we here today? Healthcare, okay. Now, we can actually kind of grow that list. Now we're going to move over to black racism. Tell me the ways in which black racism adversely impacts the lives of white people as an entire group. Thank you. The reason why you become silent, there's one that always comes up, and that's fear. White people are afraid of black people. They are afraid of us. And it's a very interesting thing, because black people know it. We know white people are afraid. But you have to start getting into the psychology. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid? But it's an interesting dynamic. Now, also you see the difference in what racism is, do you not? Racism implies you have not just prejudice, but the power to do something with that prejudice. Now, I don't like you, not only that, but I'm going to control whether you can get, you know, I may say I hate you. I hate white people. I hate them. I hate them. It's not going to change you getting that, you know, loan <laughs> when you go to the bank. You could go, you can hate, I can hate you all the way to the bank. Not going to change. Do you see the difference? That whereas white racism says, not only do I not like you, but I'm going to change the, the impact of where you can live. I'm going to determine with that racism where, where your powers are. You following me? And I'm talking about as a group, not an individual, because people said, I remember when my uncle didn't. I'm not talking about your uncle. I'm talking about the whole group. I'm not talking about an incident. That's a difference. But white people are afraid. So let's get into how this fear impacts criminal justice. Because if white people in this room are afraid, of black people? Guess who else is afraid of, afraid of black people? Only they have guns. So, now let's look at what he said. Simply put, white cops are afraid of black men. We don't talk about it. We pretend it doesn't exist. We claim colorblindness. We say white officers treat black men the same way they treat white men, but that's a lie. And here's a big one. In fact, the bigger, the darker the black man, the greater the fear. Any big black men in here? You got a big old bullseye on you, even if you got the suit on. And it's the truth, because we statistics bear it out. The African community knows this. Hell, most whites know it. Yet even though it's a central, if not the defining ingredient in the makeup of police racism, white cops won't admit it to themselves or to others. He goes on to talk about actually learning it in the academy. Norm Stamper. He told on everybody. He had folks indicted. He now lives in a cabin on a mountain somewhere in the San Juan Islands. That's where he lives. Nobody knows where he lives because he knows they're coming after him, and they have. This is a statement from the book also. Race and class discrimination are all too real in every phase of the criminal justice system, from arrest to sentencing impoverished black defendants, and this is going to sound familiar to you, are far more likely to wind up on death row than richer middle class whites or the 3, 000, and of the 3,700 inmates now awaiting execution nationwide, 43% are African American. Black defendants are not accorded the same due process rights as whites. Their cases are not given the same scrutiny and consideration afforded to white defendants. Not now, 
Not ever, not in this country. This is what the man said. It was dismal. But he doesn't believe it's possible in the current system. So what we have to realize is we need to be realistic about that. So what I have to do is teach my sons how to navigate this, do I not? Doesn't matter what I think and no oh, baby, you know, we are the world. No, this is real. You do have a bullseye on you. When, you, when you're in, a, in the elevator with the only white woman there and you're the big black man, she's clutching her purse and she's worried. That's a reality. And if you startle her too much, it used to mean you get lynched. Matter of fact, I think she could scream rape now and you'd get taken down. 